Welcome back to the green yard and a video that I have been waiting to film for the over four years now that I have been working on growing uh, tropical fruiting and flowering trees and trying to uh, be more sustainable, grow my own food. It is finally here and I am so excited. Um, today's the day that I will be harvesting our first ice cream banana bunch. Um, it's been quite a journey with our bananas uh, in our old yard. Uh, bananas were actually the first plant that I purchased. I bought a ice cream banana and a Namwa banana, dwarf Namwa banana. I actually had the dwarf Namwa bananas produced at our old house, but it was after we were already moving out. So I didn't actually get to harvest those bananas. And they were really small because it was the first bunch that we had had. It's been three years since we've been living here in the green yard. And these bananas that I'm gonna show you today, all of these banana bunches around our pool uh, were pups from our old bananas at the original house. So I didn't buy any of these bananas. They were from the two original bananas that I purchased at our old house. So pretty amazing that these giant clumps of bananas can come from just this one single pup from our old house. One of the most amazing parts of our bananas. This is my biggest clump here. Um, there's a lot of thoughts about bananas. I'm not gonna go into a whole bunch of it in detail. I let my bananas go crazy. I let them go wild. I don't stick to that um, banana plantation thought process where you only have three stocks on your bananas. I just kinda let mine go nuts. We're over here in the pool area of the green yard. Our pool right now unfortunately did crack, so it is drained until we are going to redo it, refinish it, uh, add in a few things as well. Hopefully that will happen here in the next year or so. That's kind of our goal. I like the look. I think this is a beautiful tropical look having these bananas here all the way around the pool. It really adds something to just the overall design of the pool area of the green yard. So I'm okay with them growing lots of stocks and being really long and bushy because I like the look and it offers that shade that I want as well for our pool here. Like I said, this is my biggest bunch. This one took off about a year and a half ago and just all went crazy. Uh, you can see the tops of these leaves are probably 20 feet, although the majority of the stalks themselves end at about 12 feet, which is a really good height for our ice cream bananas. Usually ice cream bananas get a lot bigger, so I'm excited that these ones are, are ending a little bit shorter. We had our first dust storm yesterday. Like I said, it's the middle of July. I know this isn't going to come out until August, but we had our first dust storm yesterday. And because these are a little bit shorter, no, none of them fell over. A lot of times if they get to be, the stalks themselves get to be that 15, 20 feet tall. As soon as there's wind, those stalks start falling over and that's definitely not something we want. As you can see here, we have a couple really, really pretty bunches of bananas uh, coming off. I actually, I saw yesterday, a flat, I think another flower on here coming out. So we'll have four uh, racks of bananas total coming off of this one clump. Super productive clump of bananas, which is really amazing. The one we're actually harvesting is in the back here. The bananas, uh, it, the clump started to fall a little bit from its normal position, and now the top bananas are turning yellow. Perfect time to harvest them. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. So uh, I'm going to go around the pool area real quick and show you the rest of our bananas. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about how I take care of our bananas and how they become so productive. And then we'll go ahead and harvest that rack that we're waiting for. Here we go.
right, so here is our rack that we're going to be harvesting. Super duper excited about it. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I know that's what we all want to see. Uh, some of our other racks coming off, uh, they're getting bigger actually. So that's something that I've noticed is that the racks actually get a lot bigger as we go along. Bees are really loving these racks of bananas uh, and those male flowers on there. They're, they're just going nuts right now. Um, and we have six racks of bananas right now going off in the pool area of the green yard. So that's pretty amazing too. Uh, just like I mentioned, here's that other one right here off that one big clump. And I think there's another flower coming out, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna find that one right now. Um, so this is what the rest of the pool area of the green yard looks like. Really nothing but bananas everywhere. Uh, we have uh, plans in the future for other plants coming in. Right now those bananas are, are really the ones that are thriving. This is the first rack that I'm getting off of this clump. These are ice creams as well. Um, a lot smaller, so I've noticed that the first rack they put off is a lot smaller than the other ones. Um, uh, I'm assuming that's just age and kind of the first clump that they put off. Here's our, uh, this is our, the backside of our Mexican lime, our key lime. You can see it's got a bunch of limes on here. I've been harvesting limes pretty much every day all through the whole summer. This clump fruited in the winter last year and of course it didn't make it because it was the winter. <laughs> and then we have our uh, foxtail palm tree tucked back there getting some nice shade in the afternoon. Now this is the other clump that's going kind of nuts this year. Um, I, it flowered last winter as well. I cut the stalk off, um, which we'll talk about here in a second. And now I have like eight pups coming off there, which is crazy. I also have two racks of bananas going on this guy. These are actually big racks too, which is awesome. Once again, those bees really loving these flowers. And then the other ones on the other side, you can kind of see it through the bananas here that we have that big rack on the other side. That's actually the biggest rack that I've gotten so far. I think that one's about six or seven hands, which is really cool. And we'll talk about what a hand is and what a rack is and what I'm talking about here in a second too. We have a plumeria, which even though it's 117 degrees right now, it is still putting off some flowers. Uh, this is one of two in the green yard and the only one that is flowering right now. The other one is not flowering. Um, ice cream bean is on the other side of the fence. I actually made a mistake with my ice cream bean and uh, it ended up frying. I forgot that it was its first uh, full summer and we've been very hot this summer and so it died back to the roots but now it's putting off a whole new stock and coming back and since those are seedling um, the ones from the nursery that I go to are seedlings I'll have no problem I'll have a new ice cream bean tree here in a little bit this is our dwarf namwa I've had these two stocks on here for a very very long time and it's finally putting off some pups so I'm very happy that we're finally getting some pups. I was afraid that I was just gonna get two stalks and that's it and no pups. So these are dwarf namwas. You can tell the size is a lot smaller than our other ice cream bananas. And so this side has our two dwarf trees. So our mystery fig, I still maintain it's a brown turkey fig. I've had a few people comment and be like, no, it's not, but I'm pretty sure it is. I don't know though. Uh, a little bit of lemongrass down here. We have one of our, um, um, it's like a dwarf date palm here. Matches the other side of the yard. And then last but not least, we have our um, store-bought bananas. The bananas you can buy in the store. Can't think of the name right now, but I will include it below. Uh, these guys are probably the most sensitive trees that we have, or bananas that I have. Um, they get sunburned a lot, like you can see right now, lots of sunburn. And then they're actually the most cold sensitive too. So something to keep in mind if you are planting uh, this type of banana. 
they do get very uh, sunburned if they're not more protected. So they actually could use, or at least here in the green yard, they could use that afternoon shade and they could honestly use a little bit of cold protection too. So it's surprising because our other bananas do great. So do have some ripe figs on here as well. I'll have to come and harvest those later today before the birds get them. So let's go ahead now and let's do what we've all been waiting for. Um, harvest that rack of bananas. Here we go. All right, so you can't quite see the rack. Uh, it's kind of tucked in back here. Let's trim this leaf real quick. There we go. So here's our rack of bananas. Um, the reason why I decided to pick it is because they're starting to turn, getting a little bit softer. Um, that's kind of the time when you want to pick them, right? I actually made some mistakes with this rack and we're going to talk about it here in a second. Um, I do have a machete too, but machete's super dull right now. I got to sharpen it. So I'm just using a regular handsaw to do this. And then we'll kind of talk about the cleanup here in a second. But we're just going to go ahead and grab right here and just saw the top like that. And there we go. We got our first rack of bananas off our ice cream banana here in Phoenix, Arizona. Super cool. Uh, this one actually it has more hands than I thought it did. So the hand itself are these bananas like the what you buy at the store. So here is the hand. So we got one, two, three, four, five hands. This one down here they're kind of a lot smaller so I don't know if I would classify that as a hand or not. Um, but we got some ripe ones on here too, so let's do kind of a dual video and let's do a tasting. Uh, let me grab this one actually down here looks like the most ripe. So they call them ice cream bananas because they're supposed to taste a little bit like vanilla ice cream. Now I don't know if that's true or not because I've never tried one before, but we're gonna give it a try right now and see. So let's just peel, peel back this guy. Oh, he's not quite ripe. That is more ripe than he was. He looked greener. Uh, we'll try it anyways. And then I'll, maybe I'll do a, before I put this out, I'll try it when it's actually ripe. Yeah, uh, this guy's not quite ripe yet. But we're gonna give it a shot. So one thing that I really like about homegrown bananas, or bananas that are not our store-bought bananas, is that they're super cute and tiny. They're like bite-sized bananas. And uh, I kind of like that. So here we go. First try with our ice cream banana here in Phoenix. Let's do it. Definitely a different taste. Very interesting taste. Um, not necessarily the best. <laughs> I think part of that is just because it's not ripe yet. Um, so I'm gonna give it a little bit longer <laughs> and let it ripen uh, off the stock and we'll talk about it more then. But So it's been a few days since we uh, harvested our rack of bananas and our bananas have ripened. Uh, they are actually quite delicious. I tried a couple as well. Um, but I wanted to try one on camera like I mentioned I would in our video. So um, they're about three, three and a half inches long or so. Um, and now they're so ripe you can see it just peels right off. Um, kind of, you know, like our typical smaller banana. It's kind of what they look like in their shape and everything. And uh, the taste, the taste is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So really soft really good quality now and the taste nothing like a store-bought banana uh, nothing like our namwa or our apple bananas either i know in peru they have a lot of little bananas like this that you know are kind of like that apple banana it doesn't taste like that either um, it actually does taste a little bit like vanilla ice cream so they are really delicious just wanted to update you we were going to mention here so here's our first rack. I'm actually gonna set the rack down. That's not what you're supposed to do. The best thing to do is to actually hang it from a big hook. 
So you hang it from a hook uh, outside or inside. I'm gonna probably do it inside so nothing eats it. Um, and you let it ripen kind of down the stalk. The mistake I made is I cut the flower off, but I cut it off too low or too high up to the bunch. So we'll, um, I'll finish my video over there and I'll show you the, what I mean by that because I have a flower over there that I need to cut off as well. So I'm gonna set this down. Let's talk about the cleanup process now that this stock is fruited. So, so our stock is fruited, right? Here's our stock that had the fruit on it. It's now useless. It's lived its life, it's done. So what I like to do is I like to cut it down and then chop it up and put it around my other bananas. Banana stocks have a lot of water in them, like a lot, a lot of water in them. So what we're gonna do we're just gonna kinda chop it into a couple pieces. This stock is actually really big. Um, this is just the top half, and it is huge. Sorry, I knocked over the camera there. This is how big that stock is, compared to my head. And we're not even at the bottom of the stock yet. So uh, these guys hold a lot of water too. Usually you'll see the water dripping out of it. Um, so pretty cool that you can take this and then use it as that mulch, especially since it does hold onto that water so well. But since there's no use for it anymore, at least we can give back to our banana plants, mulch it back in, uh, and they end up being good. That's about as far down as I'm gonna go. Uh, but definitely a big plant. I'm so happy that it was able to uh, serve its purpose, create that our first rack of bananas. I'm super excited to try those. I will put at the end of the video a trying part of the bananas once they are a little bit more ripe. We'll, we'll taste them because they're supposed to be good. It's definitely still green. As soon as I peel it back, you know, like when you peel an unripe banana, skin sticks to it. It doesn't work very well. So. That's definitely what happened there. And now that we have that open, oftentimes what our bunches of bananas will do is it'll just start putting up new pups to replace that one that we just cut down, which is super cool. All right, so we're gonna kind of end our harvesting video over here with our uh, smaller rack of bananas that we have. I think this gives the best uh, example of what I wanted to mention to you guys. So um, let's kind of talk about the anatomy of the banana real quick here. Up here we have our female flowers, we have our bananas. So the female flowers are actually this part here on the banana itself. These are obviously the bananas here up at the top. We have our stem, you can see the stem going along here. And then at the bottom we have our banana flower. And we also have these flowers down here. These are actually the male flowers. So these are the ones that the uh, bees are going to, the ants are going to, trying to get that nectar, trying to pollinate the female flowers up here. Once it's at this stage, there's no reason to have the, the flower on still. We've already got all the bananas we're gonna get off this rack. So um, what a lot of commercial doers grow is they go and they cut the banana off, the flower off, and the thought process behind that is without the flower, the plant is not trying to produce any more male flowers, and it focuses all of its attention on making bigger bananas. Now, what I did last time with that bunch that we just picked is I cut off too close to the rack. So I cut off up here. And what happened is because I think this is why, don't quote me, but this is what I noticed. Because of where we live, it's not, uh, it's pretty dry here, especially this year, it's very dry. We haven't even had our first uh, rain yet for our monsoon season, which is when we get a lot of our rain here in Phoenix. Um, it dried back. So it dried all the way up to here. My goal this time is actually to cut it down here at the very bottom where it is right now with 
all of the stock in between and I'm hoping that that means that it will it'll dry back a little bit but not all the way uh, and it'll help with these bananas keeping them here helping them get bigger helping them to uh, produce better so I'm gonna try that have to give you guys an update here uh, whenever we harvest our next bananas uh, these are ice cream bananas like I said they're pretty prolific right now but uh, I know our dwarf nam one does very well as well and our Cavendish I just remember the name our dwarf Cavendish uh, that dwarf Cavendish actually did put off a rack uh, last uh, winter in November it put off a rack of bananas unfortunately that rack did not make it through our super cold winter and like I mentioned before our dwarf Cavendish uh, have been much more cold sensitive much more sensitive to the Sun need a little bit more protection which I have not been giving them than our ice cream bananas or dwarf nam was so just something to keep in mind there as well so I'm gonna go uh, hang those bananas up Hopefully get to try a ripe banana on camera here shortly. And as always, grow some bananas. They're super easy to grow. Uh, if you want more of a growing video, I've done one before. I'm happy to do it again. This is really a harvesting video here. As always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. We'll see you next time.